So today on the We Invested podcast, we have here with us Tracy Bissett. And Tracy is the Chief Financial Fitness Trainer of Bissett Financial Fitness. She also educates and empowers individuals, notably young adults and entrepreneurs, to take control of their financial lives with confidence. And as a former executive at TD Bank, one of Canada's big five banks, Tracy has worked with and in support of thousands of individuals and entrepreneurs to secure the financing they need. Her hands-on experience, coupled with her formal education, a Master's of Business Administration, and a Chartered Financial Analyst designation, positioned Tracy uniquely to coach about all things money. Tracy leads speaking engagements and is the executive producer and host of the Young Money Podcast, all focused on increasing financial fitness. So I would like to give a huge welcome to Tracy. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm well. Thanks so much for having me, Wesley. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for joining us. And I know you have a, a long list of accomplishments and <laughs> a lot of experience within the financial um, services. So if you could kind of let us know exactly what a financial fitness trainer is and, and kind of what that entails. Sure. So I think that uh, sometimes there's barriers to learning about money, to personal finance, and even for uh, entrepreneurial finance. So for me, I do a lot of coaching and transfer knowledge that I have to other people so that they can take the mystery out of that stuff and, and really set their sights on whatever their goals are and be able to create actionable plans to get there. So sometimes it might be with entrepreneurs talking about their actual financial statements or the cash flow cycle of their business. Um, sometimes on the podcast and with young adults it's sometimes framing questions to help them understand about different topics so uh, about your credit score or how do you apply to get a loan different things like that and uh, it really uh, fuels me and it's really my passion to help take that mystery and make it a little bit less scary um, take that mystery out of money for sure and I know it is it can be quite a mystery as you said to really understand how to access the funding and the financing that we need so how did you kind of realize that void or, or realize that okay the younger generations don't necessarily know too much about finances so what led you to to discover that well, over the course of my corporate career, so when I was working in banking, I did a lot of volunteer work with uh, young adults and I saw how many questions they had or, or lack of questions and usually lack of questions comes from you don't even know where to start. Um, I know our, our school system in Canada does a really poor job of preparing students for what's going to happen after school. Um, I believe that people should learn about money and there's lessons that can be taught at every age and I think the earlier the better but I, I really saw that voice when people were going to go out into the world have to take on student debt go to post-secondary then they were going to come out and try to find a job and not really know how to deal with the debt they had and how to navigate um, so I just uh, created the podcast to try to fill some of that void and um, I teach as well at a college so I'm in touch with students all of the time uh, so I'd hear them talking about things in my class and then I would get suggestions from them and, and try to fill them um, answer the questions I was getting from them or hearing from them or uh, kind of eavesdropping on their conversations. I would try to create some education that would clear up some of the things I heard them saying that weren't true. For sure. So it's like you were you were really focused on feeling a need that you heard firsthand, feedback that mm -hmm. you heard firsthand. Absolutely. That's, that's awesome. And so I was kind of doing some, some uh, digging around on your website and just kind of something that was interesting and caught my eye. It was something called the YM um, Scholarship Fund, I think it was. Mm -hmm. so what exactly Young is Money. That? So um, just uh, in the summer, I started the Young Money Scholarship Fund. It's always been my dream to take some of the financial barrier out of post-secondary education. And so uh, students who are studying in Canada, it doesn't matter where they live or where they come from, um, they can apply and there's really just two conditions um, besides going to school. I want to know uh, what they've done to help someone else in their lives accomplish their goals uh, because I think it's really important to give to others uh, in your life and I think it makes you a more well-rounded person and certainly uh, creates better um, 
environment and better world for everybody. And then I wanted to hear what they were going to do when they finished school and what were their plans for life. So uh, we're just in the midst of contacting the winners. And um, I was originally thinking we would have five for this year, um, but we're going to have eight because I was found the story so compelling and so did our review committee as well. So uh, a small amount of money for each student, but it can buy a couple textbooks. It can help defray some of the costs and make it a little bit easier to go to school. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, you know, most, I guess most of your target audience would be millennials or younger. Um, and most of them probably still have jobs, still have nine to fives. So remembering back to when you still worked at a major corporation, how was that transition for you from a, a big corporation to starting your own operation? So I had probably the best seat in the house at the at the bank because I got to see a lot of entrepreneurs and businesses in action. So I saw a lot of things that didn't necessarily work. Um, but when I was at the bank, I was good at three things. I was an expert. And when you go out and start your own business, all of a sudden you realize you're wearing about 50 hats and you don't know how to do most of those things so um, still a big transition but I knew um, very quickly that you had to validate your idea in the market make sure that there was going to be people that wanted to pay you for what you wanted to provide because uh, it was really important for me that I maintain my lifestyle that I had grown accustomed to um, as well as grow the business so I was really focused on finding the right uh, services for those people the right market um, but then it was getting help and getting support in all the other areas I didn't really know about like my website or social media um, all of those kinds of things that I wasn't doing before okay that's awesome and so when you say validate your idea in the market can you kind of dig deeper into that like what exactly does that mean so I'm a huge proponent of anybody who's starting a business to actually take the time to make a business plan. And entrepreneurs get so excited, they wanna jump right into their business. So whether it's gonna be your full-time business or a side hustle that you're testing out, you want to think about what is it that I wanna to bring to the market, a product or service? Who do I think is going to buy it? And then do some research and whether you do some focus groups, whether you look for other companies who do similar things, find out how much these people are willing to pay for it. And then when you figure that out, um, see what you could charge and are you going to be able to make enough money on that um, to make it worth your while? And kind of on the flip side, you've got to think about when I deliver this product or service, how much does it cost me to do that? So is there a price that people are willing to pay a certain amount that covers all of my costs and I still make some money or do I need to change my idea? And um, I would say one of the things that sometimes happens when you do a business plan is you find out that your idea doesn't work. And to me, that's not a failure. That's actually time really well spent because you haven't taken your life savings or quit your job, uh, committed a lot of time to something that's not going to work. So at that point, you can either come up with a new idea or make some changes to your idea so that it actually does work in reality. And I think that's really great advice or a really uh, great piece of information to have because I know a lot of um, you know millennials and, and, and the younger crowd we just kind of want to jump right into business or jump right into our idea and not necessarily thinking all the way through and I know I've done that quite a few times myself so just <laughs> kind of reiterate that it's, it's, um, it's very beneficial but I also heard you kind of speak on um, the topic of see how much people will pay for it um, and, and make sure that your business can make money so when does cash flow become imp important for a new business? I've heard um, a few rumors. Uh, people say that generally for the first two years of business, you can expect not to make any money. So is that true? Um, you know, so when does cash flow come into play? Uh, so for me, cash flow comes into play right away. Uh, so I encourage people to create a cash flow forecast. So that's going to show you all of the money that comes in, all of the money that's going out and the timing that it happens. So if you happen to be starting with a big pool of money, maybe you had a lot of savings, maybe someone's uh, gifted you some money, that's going to determine how long you can actually go without making some money. Um, but I've seen businesses go under in as quick as 90 days because they didn't have cash coming back in. So uh, I coach entrepreneurs and I really help them figure out their cash flow cycle of their business um, and I would say 80 to 85 percent of those that I work with when they come to me they're not making any money on their products or services okay okay and they can't figure out why they're not getting a steady paycheck so it's, a, it's tough to uh, to get paid consistently when you're not making money 
Right, right, for sure. I certainly agree. And so what are like generally some of the more common things that hold new business owners or new entrepreneurs back from making that money? Like what is that obstacle or that hurdle that's hard for them to get over? Uh, so the first one is that they think I'm not good at math. I can't figure out the numbers. It's too complicated. Um, or just if I do good work, it's going to work itself out. So kind of ignoring it. Um, kind of the second piece I see a lot is that people will say, oh, I'm going to get a bookkeeper or an accountant and they're going to take care of it. Um, so certainly they can help you get organized and get the numbers straight. But as the business owner, you need to look at those numbers, use those numbers to figure out where how you're going to get to the goals you've set. And it's really important for you to be on top of that. Um, so either totally ignoring or outsourcing it to somebody else are two of the big things I see uh, right at the beginning um, that usually are the biggest hurdles and, and cause the most challenges. Okay. So like, how do you, what do you say to, to those business owners that are maybe intimidated by the numbers or like you say, not too good at math? Um, so I would, I often ask them, how long have you been in business? And if someone's been in business for more than three or four months, I will tell them that they know how to manage cash flow. They might not do it efficiently. They might not talk about it the way that I do, um, but they do know how to do it or their business would already be bankrupt. And so I like to build on the positive so they can see what they're actually doing right. So then they can start to open up their mind and and just learn new things as they come. Um, There's lots of things to learn. And um, yeah, I think you learn very quickly uh, once you feel a little bit comfortable with the numbers that you're always going to have more questions and that's okay. So learn something today. Tomorrow, learn something new and keep moving um, so you can learn more on that financial fitness journey. Sure. And how would you personally um, describe or explain what cash flow is or what you consider? Um, So I usually, yeah, I usually just start with a piece of paper. I ask people to tell me where are all the, the sources or where are all the places that money comes into your business from? Let's write them down. And then what are all the things you have to pay? Um, in in your business and let's see what happens on a weekly or a monthly basis is more coming in that is going out Um, and if more is is coming in than is going out that's a good thing if it's not let's let's see what's happening here and what can we adjust but just doing it with pen and paper I think is a great way to start Uh, we want to keep it simple and just focus on the big things that are happening in the business for sure for sure and so um, I guess another main topic that I hear you talk about our main point um, focal point of your business is just accessing funding or um, you know learning more about funding. So for the people that are not and may not be familiar with the funding options that are out there or that you know know that it's even possible, uh, what are some of the benefits of accessing outside money or funding? Uh, So a lot of people start with um, approaching their friends or family for funding to get their business going. Um, And I usually consider that to be kind of a last resort um, because you don't know with certainty that your business will succeed. And so it can create a lot of challenges in your relationship if you're borrowing money that maybe people couldn't have afforded to lend you and then maybe it's it's lost in the business. Um, Very important to um, look for free money first uh, if you can so if you can get some grants or loans that don't need to be repaid that can be forgivable Um, it's also very important um, just like in your your personal life in your business you want to set up credit so either a credit card or a line of credit or overdraft in your company name as soon as possible um, so that as your business grows there's actually a credit history for your business when you first get started it's going to be based on your personal credit score Um, to get that loan Um, but over time it can eventually transition to your business so you want to make sure you're starting that record of repayment from your company um, so that people can come to rely on it so your credit can grow as your business grows sure sure um and then another point i guess i hear you speak on is just when you're first getting started wearing many different hats and you know doing a million different things yourself so do you have any um, tips or advice or pointers on being productive and staying productive. Uh, I know you, you yourself, you do many things. You're a teacher, you're a podcaster, you're a business owner, you're a coach. So how do you stay productive yourself? Um, so at the beginning, I had to learn what do I need to get some help with? Um, Cause I was planning to do everything by myself and I did everything by myself for too long. Um, and 
certainly everyone can figure out how to do things, but there is a smarter way to do it. Um, as soon as you can afford to have a little bit of help, get some people to help you on a contract basis. Um, get them to do the things that are not easy for you. Um, stick with the things that you're good at. If you free up some of your time from some administrative things, then potentially you can make more sales. Um, so think about what you're good at. Try to get some other people to help you. I think another thing that's really important is to build a community and a network of people who are doing the same thing as you so that you can ask them for advice, you can ask them for tips. Uh, when I left my corporate job, I, most of my friends had corporate jobs, so I had to develop some new friendships and a, a bigger network with people who had their own business. So if I'm having a bad day or I don't know how to do something, I have somebody who, to call who knows exactly how I feel and they can lend me some support and vice versa. So important to have the right people around you. That's awesome. And so what do you think has been the most influential source of marketing or, or getting your business name out there or just getting to know people? Uh, I would say first and foremost, it's my network because um, I had already built up a very strong network um, because of my corporate career. So I started with them and asked them to spread the word. And then over time, I became more comfortable with social media. Uh, when I started the podcast, then I started to be in a broader area for more people to see. And that's attracted new people to come and find out about me. Um, but start with the people who already know, like, and trust you um, and, and build off of that in a way that feels um, authentic to you. You don't want to do things that don't feel right for sure and i guess that kind of leads me to my next question which which is how did you know you had the right business idea when you uh, came up with your business or, or first started so when I first started, I was doing a whole bunch of things. I hadn't quite narrowed down to young adults and entrepreneurs that I was going to work with. And I was uh, pretty much okay for anything in a huge kind of basket of services. And so over time, I really focused in on what is it that I wanted to do. Uh, I did a lot of consulting at the beginning to be able to launch that podcast and pay for it. Uh, but over time, I've become more specific. Uh, and I knew that it was working and that I had the right idea when I was making regular money every month there wasn't these huge peaks and valleys that it was consistent money coming in for sure and so once you finally got over that barrier and, and started making that consistent money how was that feeling like what was it like oh it was uh, very um, rewarding because you're you're able to build something from scratch and see it through um, so it's very empowering um, and then it fuels you on to keep doing the hard work because being an entrepreneur isn't easy it's very rewarding but you do work a lot um, and it it shows you that people like what you're doing and um, you can go out and offer some new services build on what they already like and uh, just keep going and see how you can continue to serve your clients it all comes down to staying focused on what they want and what they need right so it sounds like you're very client and customer oriented always putting them first and always listening to the clients and seeing what they need and want and like and um, just giving them what they want basically yeah and really making it um, not feel like a scary experience as we're talking about different things related to their finances because uh, it's really emotional talking about money whether it's personal or in your business and so my goal is to always make it positive um, allow them to feel comfortable to ask questions be vulnerable uh, a lot of times when I'm working with entrepreneurs there's tears at some point uh, because people have either hit a wall and they feel frustrated or they had a breakthrough and so they can be happy or they can be sad tears um, but the end of our time working together people are always coming out uh, more confident and more positive and and feel like they can actually take control of their situation which is the goal for me nice so is it difficult to get people to kind of break down that wall to feel comfortable to talk about their income? I know um, in the U.S. It's, it's kind of like taboo to talk about money and income and how much you make. So is it, is it tough to break down that barrier at first? Um, I think at first it is and certainly if you're in a group setting it's a little bit harder but one-on-one -on -one, uh, knowing that someone cares about you and they're only there to help you they're not judging you I think judgment is a huge piece of it um, so I make sure that everybody knows it's a judgment free zone and uh, my only purpose is to help them solve issues that they have in their life um, so sometimes it can take a little bit but usually people are pretty receptive because they realize okay I found someone who I can have this conversation with and I re encourage people to have better open um, more dialogue with friends family members so that it becomes less of a taboo topic um, people I know would rather talk about sex than they would talk about money um, so we've got to start having more money conversations sure sure 
And so I was just kind of, like I said earlier, um, doing some research on you and checking out your website and checking out your LinkedIn and different social media profiles. And I think you have a great online presence. And um, another thing that we were talking about is just your consistency with your podcast and, you know, dropping episodes weekly, which is not an easy thing to do. So how that, <laughs> <laughs> right. So how has your podcast and your online presence um, benefited your business? Uh, so I'm, I'm a pretty consistent person. I mean, some, some weeks it's hard slogging. I call it the podcast factory. You got to do it week in, week out, whether you want to or not. Um, but what I found is that over the years, it's really created this credible brand that's out there. People recognize, um, my name more. They, they know more what I stand for and it brings in opportunities for new clients. It brings me a lot of speaking opportunities and I get to have a lot of interesting conversations with people I would never get to meet. Um, and I think that's the most fun part of it is to get to meet people from all different places in the world um, and really hear their stories and um, just opens you up to so many new things. It's really great. For sure. For sure. And so what would you say is, is your most um, is the best thing about being an entrepreneur? Uh, for me, it's um, being able to support myself, um, being able to make enough money to continue to make contributions to the community, whether it's with money or my time, and to have freedom and flexibility about what I do with my time. I do work a lot, um, but I think that the picture you've seen is with my dog, Rosie, and uh, we're a therapy dog team, and we usually take Friday afternoons when it's not COVID time to go out and visit with seniors, and you can't really do that kind of stuff when you're in a uh, nine to five corporate jobs so those are all the things that i like about uh, having my own business for sure and so because your business seems mostly digital i know i um i know you do some speaking live speaking engagements but has covid impacted you at all uh, from the live standpoint, for sure, but I've been doing a lot more virtual speaking and uh, meeting with uh, people like you coming on different podcasts so we can keep those conversations going. Um, and it's allowed um, different dialogues to happen that maybe wouldn't have because you, everyone's working from home um, and people are being creative about the opportunities that are out there. So um, speaking in different ways, but it's certainly increased. It hasn't slowed down, I would say. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what would you say is one of the single most important reasons for your success? Uh, resilience and um, consistency. And I think a lot of people, especially the younger generation, we kind of um, take for granted the consistency at, at, at what that builds and, and really how difficult that is. So I think that's a like a huge factor to being successful at whatever it is that you do. Well, when we see um, some people who become these overnight successes, you often find out that they were many years in the making to this overnight success. So um, consistency, as long as you're, um, I'm pretty practical. So I, I have always these checks and balances to make sure um, you're doing something right consistently. Uh, if you're doing something the wrong way, that's not going to help you, but uh, validate what you're doing, um, be consistent, and then you're going to have setbacks. So be resilient and, and stick with it. For sure. And speaking of resilience, um, what's been like the most critical moment of your business journey? Kind of like a, a, fight or, a fight or flight moment. Um, I was doing a lot of consulting um, with a bank and um, choosing not to renew my contract with them was like a big decision for me um, because I was getting paid a lot of money and I wanted to focus more of my efforts on some of my other activities that I was building. Um, so really was a big decision not sure necessarily fight or flight but um had a big financial impact and i had to take more of a leap to then um pursue and actually create more revenue out of the things i was creating nice so it's like you chose your vision over the money yes in that moment but not in, but the longer term vision to make more money <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So as an entrepreneur, how do you define success? Uh, having the ability to do things on your terms, work with the people that you want, serve the clients that you want, um, have fun in what you're doing. I mean, every every moment isn't necessarily joyous, but it's a, a positive experience. I find working with fellow entrepreneurs is very positive. People are very supportive of each other. Um, money is, is a 
measure for me of success and it's not just about generating as much money as you can for the sake of having it um, but for the good that you can do with it because the more money I make the more people I can hire on my team uh, which creates jobs in my community um, the more time or money I can give to charities in my community and all of that's really important to me I think if you're successful you have a, a duty to give back to those around you sure and I think a lot of people think that um, and myself included that you can kind of do it alone or you can be self-made or you know you don't really need anybody you can make it to the top by yourself but um i've you know i just found that that's not true so how important is it for you to have a, a good solid team around you so i've been building my team slowly um as the cash flow allows so it's really important to find people who share your vision understand it um, are as committed as you are and um, have skill sets that are different than yours who can really do things faster um, better than you can is really key um, the other thing too not necessarily on my my team that i pay per se but really important in my network to have people that i can reciprocate things with we're going to support each other we're going to promote each other and so having this broader team of people who are out there as cheerleaders for your business uh, is really key so that it's, it's not just you selling it. For sure. So it's like having a good support system uh, counts just as much as having a, a good team on the payroll, pretty much. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. And so how would you like for people to remember you and your company? Uh, I would like people to remember us as a company that cared about increasing people's education and knowledge about money and was successful at increasing financial fitness, um, not only in the direct area I live, but in Canada and around the world. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I agree. And so are there like any future projects or anything that you're um, working on or anything in the works that you would like to maybe announce or talk about or anything just on your mind? Uh, so in the fall, there's two exciting things happening. One is a Young Money Planner, which is a 12-month planner for those young millionaires in the making who, who tune into Young Money. So that's one thing. And then uh, relaunching the Cash Control Bootcamp, which is a, a live online group program for entrepreneurs to learn more about cash flow and really develop a plan to help themselves. That's awesome. And you said this, this is coming this fall? Mm -hmm. That's great, man. I look forward to um, seeing that. I look forward to, to checking that out for sure. So um, on the Weird Investor podcast, we like to play a little game at the end, just a quick rapid fire round, three question game. Um, if you're up to it, I'll ask you a few questions. Sure. Yes, ma'am. So where's your favorite place to travel? Anywhere where there's water, so a lake, a beach, ocean. Um, I grew up near the water on the east coast of Canada, so that's where I like to travel to most. Okay. And so what song explains or represents your life the most right now? Um, I was thinking about this because I had listened to your show, so I was thinking of a good one. Um, I love music and this year my life has been severely impacted because I go to a lot of concerts so I was really sad <laughs> had to be missing out on about 25 um, concerts but I'm gonna go with a couple year old song uh, Justin Timberlake can't stop the feeling because uh, I think that in harder times when we still put out positivity positivity comes back so that's what I picked I like that that's a great choice <laughs> that's a great choice so last <laughs> question What's an amazing thing that you did that no one was around to see? A lot of my volunteer work. Uh, it happens kind of privately. Only the person that I do the work with knows. And um, uh, as I mentioned, it's important to me when you have a, a good life to give back to others. And it's not about being recognized for it. It's about knowing that you made a contribution to somebody else. And it's usually through time. Sure, sure. Well, Tracy, thank you so much for sitting down with us. I feel like I really learned a lot. And I also feel like you will be a great resource for myself and everyone else listening to this podcast who's just getting started on their entrepreneur journey. 
Well, thank you so much. And I'd love to leave your listeners with a gift, uh, something to help them get started. Uh, it's a money meeting agenda, so you can download it at cashcoach.biz. And that way you know what to start with right away. You don't have to wonder what am I going to talk about in these money meetings and certainly recommend at least monthly you do it, but weekly is even better for a small period of time. Uh, so you can download the money meeting agenda at cashcoach.biz. That's awesome. And can you let the people know where they can find you on social media? So I'm on um, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Best place to find me is LinkedIn. Tracy is EY and this, it has two S's, two T's. And I'd love to hear any questions or comments from uh, listeners of your show. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Yes, ma'am. Have a great day. Thank you.